Coach Mike Van Dies has decided to retire, and we would like to give Coach Van Dies an opportunity to speak to you. But before we do, I just want to share an interesting thought or statistic. Football began at Carroll just a little over 100 years ago. That means that Coach Van Dies has been our head football coach for about 20% of that time. Think about that. That is a long time. We are truly witnessing the retirement of a national college football legend in the entire country here at Carroll College. So before Coach comes to the podium, I want you to join me. And we're going to maybe do this a couple of times, but I want to hear a rousing Go Saints on the count of three. One, two, three. Go okay, that's, Coach, that's pretty good, but as you would say, we can do better, right? Right, we can do better. So we're going to try it again on the count of three. We can step it up a little bit. One, two, three. Go, Go Saints. Saints! Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a Fighting Saints round of applause to Coach Mike Van Dies. because I'm 66 years old, and you all know who Coach Gallardi was. He retired when he was 86, I'm 20 years behind him. Uh, amazing run. Probably I wish I could do the Skype. <laughs> to use this time to thank people, because there's so many people to thank. Uh, when I look at Eddie Fiesta, look back there at Fitzy, scrawny 190 pound tight end out of Chester a few years ago. Tyler Emmert, great defensive basketball specialist. <laughs> uh, ben Wall, who had a tough time jumping over the fence at Tech the other night after the game, we made it. And players, some of the players that are here now. Uh, to have Jim and Nick here. <clears throat> Coaching has a lot of different, I guess, definitions. And people have a lot of different thoughts and connotations about coaching. There's a lot of different reasons why we coach. My first experience of my coaching at Carroll College came in the winter of uh, 1976. I graduated from University of 1 in 1975, came back, and I was a fitness director at the YMCA. Jimmy Johnson hired me over there. And I was also a bouncer at uh, Corner Pocket, and I think I took away your fake ID one time per day. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad, I had a lot of friends that played at Carroll. Danny Rambo and, and uh, Kevin Dolan and those guys, and I knew the coaches and I knew the players at that time. And my dad, one day, we weren't going to go fishing, he said, let's go to a Carroll College football game. And that was in the fall. That spring, I had a chance uh, to be around. Coach Roscoe would come up here and work out in the PE Center and play racquetball and hang out. And in that fall, my dad took me to a Carroll football game. And I left at halftime because I couldn't stand being, not being a part of the game. It was hard. It was really hard. It was just, I, I left at halftime. I said, Dad, uh, I want to coach. I want to try my, I never thought about it. My dad was my baseball coach growing up. I loved him, I idolized him, and, uh, we butted heads a lot, and that's why I would made the decision to get the coaching easy because of his influence in me. 
put on me. So I went back in 1976 and asked Coach Akers if I could uh, be a volunteer coach and come on board, and he let me. That's when it all started. It started to fall in 1976, 43 years. And uh, it's taken me a lot of places. Uh, I've had a chance to coach some tremendous, tremendous young men. And uh, Kurt Whitehead and John Burrow at the University of Wyoming. David Pioli, Arnie Ragoni, Jim Hogan at the University of Montana, Joey Collin, who's now coach for the Baltimore Ravens at the University of Massachusetts, Danny Frevoletti, and uh, Dale Ashmore at Northwestern, and countless guys, and these guys that are here. And you look at Alex and Alex, who they came and played and they're still here, and I think that tells you about what Carroll College means to them. But I could take an hour or two to thank everybody that's been there for some of my life. I remember when the Cale College job came open, uh, I really wasn't planning on applying for it. I talked about it at times, and as coach at the University of Wyoming, I was the assistant head coach there, and the head coach there wanted me to stay on board, and if he left, maybe take over a place I truly love, University of Wyoming, where I played. But I always thought a lot about Carroll. Uh, I don't think they would have let me in with my ACT scores in 1970. <laughs> they didn't ask for them when I applied for the job in 1999, so it all worked out well. But I thought about what Carroll meant. And Coach Petrino was a guy that, uh, uh, he was at Butte Central when I was a player, and I played against him when he was a coach. So I knew the tradition, like I said, a lot of my friends of mine. Uh, there was Dr. Manning, there was Dr. Murray, there was Leo Walchuk in the business office. There were so many wonderful people, uh, Guido Buni, that I knew of. And one of the first people I called, two people I called, three people, Dr. Jack McMahon, who was a very close friend, uh, Bob Robinson, and Gary Turcott, and asked them about the job and about what this place meant to them and what it looked like going forward. And the day I got hired uh, was awesome. I can't thank Dr. Matt Quinn enough for hiring me the president of Carroll College at that time. And I called Gary Turcott, or he called me and congratulated me. And it was awesome because I know Gary as a high school coach when he was at Great Falls High. Some of the players that he had coached when he recruited in University of Montana, he was just a guy that I knew a lot about. And, uh, it was great to get a phone call from him. I'll never forget, he, he just, he welcomed me to the Carroll family. And one of the last things he said, he says, Mike, you do this. this is a great opportunity for you. I'm looking forward to coaching alongside of you. And when you and your family get moved up here, I want to have you and Heidi and the boys over for dinner. Eight years later, we went over to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so he held, he held his part of the bargain up. <laughs> but there's so many people I can look around and, and, and the people that made this place wonderful. And, this is a lot different than when we were in room 176 on my press conference when I got the job. There was uh, L. Marks, my mom and dad. <laughs> Jeff Thompson was the AD there. Heidi, Shane, and Clay. Clay fell asleep on the desk about five minutes into the press conference. So <laughs> that was it. But it was wonderful. Uh, there's so many wonderful people here. Holly Luck is a gal that I hope to see later. She's a, a Brad and Holly and her family. We grew up next to each other in East Helena, on the right side of Prickly Pear Creek. And Holly probably led the charge in the Helena community to help me get hired, her and Rick Pfeiffer, and uh, her brother Brad in Missoula. I owe them an awful lot. And I just remember on my uh, interview when we had the, the, the open forum for the public down in the basement of the campus center, and uh, Holly was there, and Rick was there, Tony Arson was there. Uh, and my mom was the back saying rosaries. <laughs> she saying a lot of rosaries for me over the years, so it wasn't the first time. But there's so many people to thank for that. Uh, because I wasn't a Carol guy. And when I came, you're sitting in a room with Gary Turcott, who played at Carol. Amy Hines, a volleyball coach, played at Carol. Sean Nelson was a player at Carol College. Coach Gross has been from Carol College. 
I was the outsider, and yet they welcomed me with uh, open arms and gave me a chance, and that meant everything to me. And, uh, no idea what was going forward, no idea what was going to take place. But I remember, and the guy that I miss a lot is John Etchart. Uh, he had a lot to do with helping get this job, as did Cliff Edwards. In fact, I just read a note the other day that I was going through a bunch of stuff that Cliff and John had written, had written to the president on my behalf. And it was, they were awesome, they were awesome letters. And those are the type of people that the friendships were built. And for that winter, for the fall of 98, I think probably at least once or twice a week, I was woken up by a phone call about 5.30 in the morning from Jim Hogan, who was coaching at Billy Central. He said, Deast, let's go do this together. And thanks, Jim. You're the best, buddy. <laughs> But I think between Holly and Jim and Heidi, that's how I ended up at Carroll College. I've never set out to be a head coach. It was never my goal. When I became a coach, I remember Bill Lewis and, and uh, Fred Akers and some of the guys I coached for, Jim, Joe Tiller, who was one of my all-time all -time great mentors at Wyoming, and always said, you know, you got to be an assistant coach, you got to work your way up to coordinator, then you got to go be a head coach at a certain age. And that just wasn't me. I didn't need a title. The two titles I cherished were dad and coach. I didn't need another title on top of that. But all the things that took place that fell into place for me and brought me to Carroll College uh, was an unbelievable path. Unbelievable. In that first year, Jim, and then subsequently Iron Nick Howell, uh, that first staff was awesome. It was Jeff Savage, came from Valir, and I know Jeff, who's a high school coach in Wyoming. Jim, Steve Jones was on that staff. Chuck Harvey from Townsend, I know him for a long time. Drove every day back and forth from Townsend to coach your running backs and secondary. Tony Spencer, who played here, was on that staff. It was a heck of a staff. And we tell the stories a lot, and Jim and Nick, they know it better, and their wives know it better, as mine does. That we work a lot of hours. We work a lot of hours. But there's a lot of time that Jim and Nick and I would just stay afterwards and talk. And those are some of the best times. Just the football part of it was great. The relationships were better. The scoreboard only tells half the story. Football is a great game. It's a great game. It's taken a lot of hits from people that have never played the game. <clears throat> and to the admin, that's too bad. It's a great game. I came on my interview and I had a chance to spend about four hours with Parker Heller driving me around, showing me houses. And it was on, okay, you got Capitol High, you got Helena High. Where are you going to live? You got two boys. Where are you going to live? I said, well, that's pretty easy because. Mark Sampson and our family grew up in East Helena. <coughs> Brother Dick and I were classmates from the same age. Their dad was my basketball coach in eighth grade at East Helena Mustangs at St. Anne's High School or grade school. And Tony Arson, I helped recruit to the University of Montana, played for us in 1985. I said, so it's whatever this young lady up here wants to buy a house, <laughs> that's where we're going to live. So we couldn't go wrong. Parker did, did a great job. He, he sold us a wonderful house. He was a great friend. He's been a great friend since then. And every time I'm on my lawn on this level, I cuss him out because he showed me the house. It was under snow, and he did tell me that there was no one spot in his house. So, but those are the friendships, and those are the things that, that comes with Carroll College. Uh, the type of people that you get a chance to be. And, I tell this to everybody, and I've said to Jim and Nick, and, and I tell it to a lot, I talk to a lot of my friends and former teammates, is that there's a lot of my buddies that coach at the so-called big time that would have traded places with me at Wyoming any time. 
because of what we have here. Where do you get a chance to coach guys like Tyler Emmert, and Casey Fitzsimmons, Andy Fiesz, and Ben Wall, Sean Bloomquist, Gary Cooper, Joe Horn, Hugh Melton, and double weenie back there, uh, Tony Manson. He's double weenie because he wears 1-1, one -one, not because of anything else. <laughs> In case anybody's wondering. But where do you get a chance to be around guys like Bo Meyer and Matt Quebec and, and uh, Brian Fowler and these freshmen that are up here in these first rows? Where do you get a chance to do that? Coaching is where you get a chance to do that. It's extended family. But there are families. We got a room in our house for Sean Bloomquist anytime he wants to stop by. <laughs> I told Heidi now that, you know, I'm stepping down, I can go down and, 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 and I'm going to go to the Billings West uh, Flathead game. And we got three former players coaching the Flathead, and Jake Cohn and Sean Bloomquist and that up. And I can sit there and I don't have to be neutral. I can cheer for that group because they've been locked to this program. And you can see what they've done for Flathead High School. But there's so many people from Lloyd Peterson and Janet Riss. Uh, I couldn't do my job without them. They're, uh, they're amazing. Uh, what they've done for me up, up there in financial aid, the business office has been invaluable. And Renee Wall, uh, she was a little pain in the butt when her brother Fast Eddie and I were growing up together. She was a little girl running around being the pain at, at the Walchuk house, but uh, then we get a chance to work together with her and Jennifer brought. And, and now it's Katie and, and Heather. And what they do up front for us is just amazing. Uh, I can't thank them and, and the people on this campus because they get us, they allow us to do our job. They allow us to do our job. And that's what's, what's wonderful. The training staff, uh, they take care of these athletes. They get them back on the field and they show up and they do all the things that behind the scene. And when there's a win, they don't get their names in the paper, but they all deserve it. They all deserve it. And friends like Becky and, and Bill and Jerry Landorf. And there's so many. I mean, there's going to be people I leave out, but uh, I'll get a chance to say thanks to them a lot. Father Mark's been a great confidant. Well, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, I hope we can even get closer now. That we got some time, and I got some time to spend together. And I've been blessed. I, I've worked for a lot of ADs and presidents since I've been here. <laughs> and Charlie coming in, I know it's hard for coaches or for, for ADs and, and presidents to come in when there's already somebody in place. I know it's time to step down. And their leadership will do an amazing job of whoever the next coach is, because this is a great place and will attract a lot of people. And we're so blessed. My mom and dad were great people, unbelievable. <clears throat> they did everything for me that I could ever ask for. I mean, I know we all have parents like that. But they gave me a chance to follow my dream. I know we got fired at the University of Montana. Jim and I were in the staff together in 1985. Heidi, you know, that was her alma mater, University of Montana. And I was an only child, and her parents and families all from Montana. And a couple guys in that staff that year decided to get out of coaching. And I couldn't do it. And on that staff we had, Larry Donovan, our head coach, he went on and came with them one point and winning the Grey Cup in Canada. Joe Glenn wins the National Championship at the University of Montana in two in Northern Colorado. Kenny Flagel has been in two Super Bowls and won one last year with the Eagles. And look at Hogie's nut. We, we had a great staff and things just didn't work out. It was a great staff. And so where do I go from there in 1985? Amherst, Massachusetts. And my mom and dad and Heidi's folks, I was not very popular because she was pregnant with our first child, the first grandchild on the other side, Shane. And I've taken 2,000 miles away in Amherst, Massachusetts. But it was a great opportunity because that path brought me back towards Wyoming. And being at the University of Wyoming brought me to Carroll College. And those are the things that just, uh, you can't plan it out. God has a plan for all of us. It's not the blueprint that I would have had, but it's the blueprint that he had. And it worked out. It was awesome. And we're all surrounded by great people. And 
my mom and dad were great people. There's three, three women that in my life that uh, mean a lot to me. And uh, Michelle Sayers is a, is a big part of my life. Uh, the things I get to share with her, the books she's bought me, uh, and coaching has meant a lot. I probably should have read some of them twice or three times. And uh, I love hearing that foot stomp on the floor during the basketball game. I know it gets the players' attention because wherever I'm sitting, it gets my attention. <laughs> and her friendship is, is invaluable, as, as is her assistant coach, Gary Turcotte, one of the greatest guys I've been around. Uh, the person that, Bunny Tevens is a good friend of mine, head coach at Dartmouth, and he hired uh, a woman this year on the staff. And if I ever had a staff or I'd come back again, no offense to Jim or Nick, but the first person I'm going to hire is Bo Boyle. <laughs> There's a lot, and I don't want to say this to make her feel bad, but there's a lot of me I see in her. <laughs> <laughs> I try to tell a good thing. I really am. Yeah. But I love oh, her friendship here has been amazing. It's been just awesome. I love watching her coach. We share a lot. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, today's teams, and today's athletes. And just her, uh, her insight is unbelievable. It's great. And Nick and Jim, our friendships go back so far. I got a picture of Nick sitting on my lap, and he's telling me because him and his brother and sister used to come over to my mom and dad for Sunday dinner a lot. And our families were friends growing up. His grandmother was my godmother, Ellen East. And our friendships go back. I know Jim since 1980. He was an outside linebacker for us. And, uh, he was an unbelievable football player. His love of the game is unparalleled. Unbelievable. I got two sons that uh, Clay moved away at 16. He left home at 16 to pursue a dream. And Heidi didn't talk to me for about six weeks because of that dream. Like I had anything to do with hockey. <laughs> but he moved away at 16. And that was hard for both of us. But then I, I had to open up her eyes to the other side of it where Shane didn't leave till he was 23. <laughs> so between the two of them, that was out to, to a pretty normal uh, life of kids staying within, within their home. And those two boys have been texting, we talked yesterday. Uh, it's been great. Shane was not my favorite player I've ever coached. It's Clay senior in high school, or in college. And over those last eight years he's been gone, I've only seen a handful of his games. And every week I see parents that come in with their sons, and it's awesome. And senior day every year is it's very emotional. And I want to be a part of his senior day. And we have a granddaughter that I want to go see in St. Louis. And, uh, that's going to be, mean a lot to me, to get to spend time with them. Because I can't turn the clock back on what I've missed. I can certainly go forward and help and support them in their life. And I'll always be a kid with Christ by the same. Uh, Wyoming's my first love as a college coach because I played there. Uh, I can't wait to go. I have a couple of duels with Dan Burkowski and Andy Dixon, and Danny Kowalski and Greg Gray and my, my teammates. I've missed a lot of those homecoming and, and uh, days when all my teammates get together on the road or in Laramie. Uh, they, they show me, they text me. And I was so fired up last year when Wyoming got to play in Boise in a bowl game. And Clay and I got tickets and we went down there. None of my teammates wanted to go to Boise. <laughs> Over Christmas, it's like I couldn't believe that. They go to Phoenix, they go to Tempe, they go to San Diego, they go to all those places. So hopefully Wyoming someday can get to one of those more warm places and we'll go and I'll get a chance to go be a teammate with them because that's Casey and Tyler and Alex and Alex and Andy and Ben and Bo and all these guys have been great teammates. 
I miss my teammates. I miss those teammates. They're the best. Uh, the days in the locker rooms, the bus rides, uh, they're unbelievable. But I will not miss a 17 hour bus ride one way to Southern Oregon next year. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. All the ADs and presidents that voted on them, none of them have ever taken a bus ride out there with us. <laughs> so I don't know. You know it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a quite experience. I've listened to a lot of uh, retirement speeches, huh? and then this, this. There's people I haven't thanked I need to thank. I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll get a chance to see them and talk to them. First and foremost, the players. I love you guys. There's a... The first thing I hear are people's mouths, whether, no matter what the position, but there are a lot of coaches and retirements, is the first thing they talk about is they say, thank you. I have no regrets. I have regrets. I can't stand up here and say that everything I did was the right way. Or I wouldn't do it different. But I don't think that's the way it should be done. I do have regrets. There's a there's a prayer that we have in the Catholic Church that could be here. And part of it says in my thoughts and in my words and what I've done and what I failed to do through my fault. And those are the times I have regrets. I have a wonderful wife that has stood by my side every step of the way. Even when I took her to Amherst, Massachusetts, <laughs> 2,000 miles from her family. And I remember we were in Chicago coaching at Northwestern, and I learned a lot of football. It humbled me a lot coaching there against uh, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. I thought I knew everything. I did. I'm going against those offensive lines. But then I got the job at Wyoming. Joe Tiller and Larry Corpus met me at O'Hare Airport and offered me the job. And it was like, this is awesome. I get to go home. Larry was my home. And so for the months leading up to that and all the times we were married, uh, all I talked about, what a great place in Laramie, Wyoming is. And this wonderful, <laughs> it was my place. <laughs> and the day Heidi Shane and Clay drove in, I don't think she had the same perspective of Laramie that I do. <laughs> but bless her heart. Uh, she worked through the house that Larry and I bought together because he was the only one that I showed. And as coaches, we're the only ones there. Our wives, his wife was still in Chico, California, and Heidi was in Northwestern in Chicago selling our house with the boys. And so I like the house that Larry bought. Larry liked the house that I bought. It's just not the house that our wives liked. <laughs> but uh, for somehow they stayed with us. And Heidi, I love you. 